Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. My name is Nashla Dewari and I will be facilitating today's session for Florida Shine College Success Series where you learn everything you need to know about meta majors and advising resources for you in Florida. Now before we begin, I want to go over a few items with you. If you have any questions during today's session, you can put them in the question box and we will address them during the live Q&A at the end of the session. Closed captioning is provided for this session and you can use the link provided in the chat box. We will also be recording this session. The recording along with all the materials shared today will be posted on our website on floridashines.org. And finally, we are live on Twitter, so feel free to share your comments and connect with us at FL Shines. So thank you. I'm very excited to introduce our speaker today, Janae Chandler. Janae serves as the Director of Student Affairs in the Office of Academic and Student Affairs at the Florida College System. She works directly with all of 28 Florida colleges and she has over nine years of higher education experience in both the Florida College System and the State University System. We are very excited to have her with us today. We couldn't think of a better expert in the area of meta majors and advising resources. So, Janae, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited about the information we'll share um, regarding majors and meta majors to kind of help you um, along your um, journey to enter college um, in the Florida college system or at a university as well. Um, the information we'll share today is very useful um, for your collegiate studies as well as if you're doing dual enrollment. It can definitely be applied and help you um, with course selection. So I want to go ahead and start with a brief overview of the Florida College System and um, just to share with you some information about who we are. The Florida, the Florida College System consists of 28 colleges that provide open access post-secondary education across the state. The Florida College System is the access point for students to earn workforce credentials and start on a path to journey, joining the workforce and success. And also is recognized for its pathway to the university system through statewide 2 plus 2 articulation agreements, um, where students who earn an AA degree, or an Associate of Arts degree rather, um, are guaranteed admission into a state university system university. Um, three out of five students who earn a standard high school diploma in 2013 um, through 2015 enrolled in post-secondary education in the, in the Florida college system. So um, over 63% of high school graduates in Florida attend a Florida college system institution. So the Florida College System offers a variety of workforce credentials that prepare students for the workforce and can also be used as stackable credentials, allowing students to enter the workforce, then return at a later time with their credits um, that will still continue on and count towards the next certificate or degree. So you, won't, you don't lose credit for work that you've done. You're able to stack it um, if you need to return at a later time. Um, we don't want you to leave, but if you have to, if you're in a position, you have the option to uh, pursue a credential that is stackable. Um, the Associate in Science and Associate in Applied Sciences degrees are typically two-year programs that range from 60 to 72 hours of lower division credits and prepare students for entry into employment. Um, the college credit certificate um, is part of an AS or an AAS degree, which is typically less than 60 hours um, of lower division coursework. Um, students who complete the credentials can come back at a later time, as I mentioned earlier, as well. So um, then the last certificate available is the, the Career and Technical Certificate, um, which is based on accumulation of clock hours and technical courses and prepares students for direct entry into the workforce. Um, the clock hours earned in the career and technical certificate may also articulate into an Associate of Science or an, apply, an Associate of Applied Science degree um, for a designated number of credit hours. Um, we also offer 
baccalaureate degrees or bachelor's degrees in the Florida college system. So you can also pursue a four-year degree with us. And we have workforce baccalaureate degrees that consist of approximately 120 credit hours and prepare students for high-demand, high-need fields. The degree must include general education coursework, just as if you were at a university, and foreign language competencies um, that you can also earn through the AA degree. Um, however, students can also articulate into the workforce baccalaureate degree um, with a, a, an associate in science degree as well. Um, and you can also receive credit for work done within the Associate of Applied Science degree. So again, that's just some examples of the options you have in um, the Florida College system. Aligning to the workforce. So um, this chart shows the completions of certificates and degrees in the Florida College system for the 2015-2016 academic year, as well as the average earnings reported by graduates. The Associate of Arts made up 50% of the completions in the Florida College system, followed by the career certificates at 22%, um, and the Associate of Science degrees at 13%, and the Workforce Baccalaureate degrees at 6%. Um, the remaining 1% consisted of other programs such as advanced technical certificates um, and advanced technical diplomas. So as you can see, a variety students come to the Florida College system for a variety of um, goals and intentions, and so we're able to fulfill the needs of students who have a variety of um, goals in mind. So to enter into our topic about academic advising and course selection, I want to start with just some key items to remember when you're advising for dual enrollment or um, if you're in preparing to enter the Florida College system. Um, the first thing, I'm, first resource I want to tell you about is findmycollegemajor.org. It is a tool to help students explore career and major options that align um, with your career goals as well as that are available in your area. And I'll walk you through Find My College Major so you can see how that works. Um, the second piece of information I want you to have is that it's important to identify a major or a meta major. Um, we'll go into more detail in this webinar about that. Um, knowing the common prerequisites for your selected program of study. We'll go into more detail about that as well, but common prerequisites are um, basically admission requirements um, for baccalaureate programs at the state university system as well as the Florida college system. So if you are a student um, or your student wants to enroll in a baccalaureate degree, there will be course requirements that must be met for admission. And so the state, we refer to them as common prerequisites. Um, and then last but not least, um, general education core requirements. Um, general education core requirements are the, uh, a set of courses that are required by law for, in Florida that students must complete, whether they're at the Florida college system or they're planning on enrolling in the state university system. It is important to be aware of general education core requirements and common prerequisites when selecting courses in order to reach your academic and career goals quicker while also reducing financial burden. So it's important financially that you consider these four resources because it does impact your time to degree completion. So we'll go ahead and talk about find my college major first, and then we'll get into all of the other items. So Find My College Major was developed to ensure students were able, um, aware of programs offered in the Florida College system. FindMyCollegeMajor.org is a web-based application that allows students to search by zip code for certificate and degree programs in their local area. So FindMyCollegeMajor.org also provides students information on tuition and fees, average time to degree completion, workforce and average wage outcomes, for graduates of the programs. Um, once an undecided student identifies career, a career area of interest, Find My College Major can um, help the student select a major or a meta major that best aligns with that career field. The next few slides will walk you through the tool and how it, it can be used to inform um, 
students' options in their local area. So the first thing you, a student would do or you will do is you will log in and you will say you would select an area um, of interest. So if you like to build things, if you like to empower others, if you like to help people or animals, you can select that. For this example, I went ahead and chose STEM for science, technology, engineering, and math. Once you select your area, um, your career area of interest, um, you then let the system know um, where you would like to see programs. So in the beginning, you put a zip code and you put, I'll show you again. In the beginning, you put a zip code and how far you would like to travel. And what that does is it will only show you programs at colleges that meet your distance criteria. So in this case, only Broward, Miami, Day, and Palm Beach showed up because, again, I was only willing to travel within 60 miles. So um, it will only show you the programs that's available in that area. The next screen you will see after you select the college, so I chose Miami-Dade for this example, it will show you the level of degree programs and certificate programs available, and it will also show you the exact major of the programs available. So I selected an associate degree because I can handle being in school for two years, um, I don't necessarily want to go four years, but I can do two years. Just show me the two-year programs, and that's what you see at the bottom of the slide. You see um, the computer programming associate of science degree there. So once you select the program, the next piece you will get is the career path and um, outlook for the position, I mean for the degree. So this screen um, will summarize um, the program details, the cost of attendance, um, as well as the length of the program, and how graduates are performing um, of this particular program. Um, it will also include the reported salaries, the job placement, and then like the average age of the recent graduates. So this is a really good tool if you're uncertain on a major or if you, ha if you work with undecided students. Um, and especially if you have um, location restrictions, you, may, you know, some students have to stay close to home or work or they want to be close to family, this will help them narrow down programs that are in a particular area. So meta majors. So meta majors are a great tool for students who um, know what area they want to pursue a degree in, but not sure on an exact program. And meta majors are important because you want to make sure that you're taking the correct courses, even though you're undecided. You want to make sure you're in a, the appropriate math courses, you're in the appropriate science courses, and meta majors help guide you in your course selection as an undecided student. So I'm going to show you um, a video um, because there are a lot of tools available to assist students in selecting a meta major. And this is a cool little video um, that was created by Indian River State College. And it gives a great overview of what meta majors are. And so I'm going to go ahead and show, uh, share that video with you at this time. Hey there. So have you met a major? Well, this is Major. Say hi, Major. Actually, he's not the major I was talking about. I'm talking about a meta major. If you're watching this video, you're probably planning to enroll in college soon. When you do, one of the first questions you will be asked is, what's your major? A major is a specific area of study leading to your chosen career like accounting, psychology, or criminal justice. You may not be ready to choose your exact major. That's where a meta major comes in. A meta major is a broad category of study, such as health sciences, which encompasses a lot of different majors. Even though you may not be sure about your major right now, selecting a meta major puts you on the right path to the field you'd like to be in without narrowing it down to the exact profession. Get the idea? Okay, good. 
our friend Major over here is going to briefly walk us through the eight Meta Majors. Ready, Major? Okay, let's go. The first Meta Major we'll visit today is Arts, Humanities, Communication, and Design. This Meta Major is for students who would like to go into careers in music, graphic arts, digital media, television and film production, writing, or law. Nice work, Major. Lead the way. Our second Meta Major is Business, including Accounting, Business Administration, Finance, and Marketing. If you see yourself as a business owner, manager, or working for a big corporation, this is the Meta Major for you. Onward. Here we are at our third Meta Major, Education. This Meta Major is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to make a difference as a teacher, principal, or school counselor, you'll want to choose Education as your Meta Major. Where to, Major? Ah, now we're on our fourth meta major, health science. There are many careers in the health science industry. This is the meta major you would choose if you're looking to work as a nurse or in respiratory care or possibly in radiography. Let's keep moving, shall we? This is getting good. This looks interesting. Welcome to the industry, manufacturing and construction meta major. Do you like to build or fix things? Well, this meta major includes fields like architectural design and construction technology, drafting and design technology, and air conditioning, refrigeration, and heating technology. Well done, Major. Can you take us to the sixth Meta Major now? Here we are at the Public Safety Meta Major, leading to majors in Criminal Justice, Paralegal Studies, and Fire Science Technology. So if you can picture yourself as a detective or responding to an emergency or working for the FBI, this is your Meta Major. Maybe you can be a major someday. Oh, well, sorry. Let's move on, shall we? Meta major number seven, science, technology, engineering, and math. You may have heard this called STEM. This is the meta major you would choose if you want to pursue a career as an engineer, a computer programmer, or as a biochemist in a high-tech lab. Well, we've reached our final meta major, which is social and behavioral sciences and human services. Do you want to learn how and why society impacts us, or maybe help your community serving in government, or help other people as a social worker? If so, then this is the meta major for you. Whew, thanks, major. Why is a meta major important? Well, even though you may not have made up your mind yet about a major or career, narrowing down your choices to a broad category, a meta major, will put you on the right path. Your advisor will assist you by identifying the appropriate courses, such as the right math for you. You'll get ready for your major. Then, once you decide, you'll be able to jump right into your required courses. That kind of planning saves you time and money. And who couldn't use more time and money? Major, can you show us the eight meta majors one more time? Arts, Humanities, Communication and Design, Business, Education, Health Science, Industry, Manufacturing and Construction, Public Safety, Science, Technology, Engineering and Math, and Social and Behavioral Sciences and Human Services. We hope you fully understand these eight different meta majors and why it's important to select one. Your advisor knows all about meta majors and can help you decide on your path to success. Time to say goodbye, Major. So again, as Major said, you know, it's important to look at your meta major academic pathway options because gateway courses are tied to your meta majors. Your gateway courses are your math and your English courses that would be required for each um, major or meta major. For instance, um, if you're pursuing a STEM field or a health science field, um, college algebra, MAC, X105 would be the appropriate math for that, that meta major. Whereas if you were going into education, um, the, the gateway math course would be liberal arts, math, or statistics. So um, it's important that we really consider what meta majors are because you want to ensure the correct math courses are being um, taken. Common prerequisites. So I mentioned common prerequisites earlier. Um, many programs of study require the completion of common prerequisites or specific courses required before enrolling in the actual program of study. The number of common prerequisite courses required differs by program. 
common prerequisites often um, overlap with general education core courses or general education graduation requirements, which is another reason students should select their major before taking post-secondary classes. So this is um, this a good example of this would be for business. So one of the common prerequisites for business is economics. Um, economics is a social science. It's also a part of the general education core. But history is also a social science, and most students navigate or counselors would navigate to a history course. However, a student wouldn't need a history course for their bachelor's degree if they're pursuing business because they can satisfy social sciences with economics, right? So this is why it's important, even in high school or before um, enrolling in um, doing enrollment courses or pursuing your baccalaureate degree or associates, is to look at all of these pieces because some of the requirements overlap and it could save you time and money. Because if you have a history course and you still need econ or economics, um, you know, that's an additional course to take. The next requirement that's important would be the general education core requirements. Um, students must complete a minimum of one course from each of the five core subject areas, so communications, humanities, mathematics, natural sciences, and social sciences. When selecting a mathematics course to complete the general education core requirements, students are strongly encouraged to consider their major or meta major and the associated gateway course in mathematics. Again, we talked about the math and how that aligns with meta majors, and then I also just gave an example of where overlap can occur for social sciences. So um, again, looking at all three of these components, um, general education core, common prerequisites, and the gateway, um, gateway courses for meta majors. They all tie in together and should be considered when um, selecting courses. And I want to let you know about some advising resources that's available where you can find this information. Um, the first item listed will be your dual enrollment equivalency list, and you can look these up on Google. They're public records and public documents, um, or Florida Shines, I believe, also has um, links where you can access these documents. So the dual enrollment equivalency list, um, provides high school students who are pursuing dual enrollment. It tells you what the college course counts for in, for your high school diploma. So it will tell you what you would get credit for in high school for taking a college um, Ian English course or a college psychology or sociology course. It tells you exactly how many credits it counts towards your high school diploma and for what areas. The general education core requirements, they are in rule in Florida Administrative Code um, 6A140303. It will tell you exactly which college courses count for your general education core. Um, not everything's on that list. It's a very small list, so it's very important to look at that rule and identify the core, gen ed core. That way, if you receive information from an advisor or a counselor, you can confirm whether or not the course they're recommending um, is, yes, we will share this, <laughs> um, is a, definitely a general education core. Um, and then the meta major academic pathways, that is also in Florida rule, in Florida administrative code. Um, and what, what's in that rule is cool because it will tell you by meta major, what is the appropriate math options for students? So that's another piece, um, another resource that you can use. Um, the Common Prerequisite Manual lists all of the common prerequisites required for all of the baccalaureate degrees at Florida public institutions. So if business is offered at US, FSU, um, Miami-Dade College, it would all be listed on one page and it will have all the common prerequisites required for all of the institutions. So um, in Florida, we have it pretty cool because we have all of the prereqs are supposed to be common and all of the admissions requirements for those programs should be common. So um, you don't have to search 
multiple places, you can visit the Common Prerequisite Manual and find um, the required courses. And last but not least is the Florida Counseling for Future Education Handbook. Um, it's updated annually and is a resource to provide school counselors with advising and articulation information to advise students who plan to pursue their post-secondary education in Florida. It's very useful because you can find everything from high school requirements um, through college, so it's very resourceful. Um, I want to talk about some resources that we have in addition to advising. It's still related to advising, but I want to make sure that we um, are clear that students with disabilities are welcome at all Florida colleges. College students with documented disabilities are eligible to receive auxiliary aids and services, which may include um, extended time on exams, text in alternative formats, note takers, and sign language interpreters. In order to receive services, students must self-disclose, so it's a little different from high school, um, but you have to self-disclose your disability and register with the college's Office of Student Disability Services. Students in need of disability services must also present current documentation of their disability. Um, so documentation may vary across colleges. Um, and may be very different from what was supplied in middle and high school. So I just want to, to note that caveat there. Um, colleges recommend that students register as early as possible before beginning a semester to ensure accommodations are in place. Um, this is important if you're um, participating in dual enrollment. Um, you have access to um, our disability resources, but it is set up differently where you would have to go and disclose to the centers and let them know you need those resources. So I just wanted to make sure that I share that information with you. Um, and we have quite a few students who, who decide to study with us. Um, in 2016, the 2017 academic year, we had over 20,000 students enrolled um, and Florida College System Institutions who registered with the Student Disability Center. So um, students are definitely um, taking advantage of the resources that we have available. And last but not least, um, articulation. Um, we have partnerships with the state university system where, um, again, students who earn an AA or an Associate of Arts degree can transfer to a state university system and have their credits honored. Um, it does not guarantee admission to a limited access program. Those programs will have um, additional requirements, um, which can range from GPA, particular courses, interviews, um, auditions, if it's you know the fine arts. Um, we have some of the larger programs are going to be um, your FUSE with um, USF um, and several of our colleges. Um, then we also have Direct Connect with UCF um, with several colleges within the Florida College system. We have the TCC to FSU partnership as well as the Santa Fe to US University of Florida um, partnership. So Florida Strong 2 plus 2 articulation policies and common state course numbering systems help provide a pathway for Florida College system graduates to transfer to a state university system um, institution. There are over 69 targeted articulation agreements in Florida. So it's a great entry point um, for students who um, want to save money or stay you know, close to home um, and or who may just decide they want the smaller atmosphere in the beginning. So we do have articulation across the state of Florida. I just wanted to also share that information with you. Yes. I, and now you. I'm going to turn it over. Yes. Oh, go ahead, Janae. Did you have? No, I wanted you to go ahead and, and tell us about uh, the career, career options here available through Florida Shines. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate you sharing this information with us today and knowing that there's really a lot of information for students to learn about majors and programs in the state and then make sure that they're on track with their studies. It makes such a difference if you have a plan and you're making informed, educated decisions about your education. So thank you for sharing those, Janae. Before I jump into my career shines, I wanted to invite our audience to send in their questions. So while we're learning a little bit more about MicroShines, if you have any questions for Janae, just put them in the question box. But I wanted to share one more resource with you uh, to really help you learn about your interests and narrow down your choices for a major and ultimately a career. The service is called My Career Shines, and again, it allows you to explore careers, make a plan for education, and prepare for work. My Career Shines is free for all of Florida students, and by creating an account, you get to complete the assessments that allow you to learn more about yourself, your interests, your abilities, and occupations that are truly relevant to you. So to learn more, you can go to MyCareerShines.org and open an account. When you're there, before you open an account with My Career Shines, you will also get to see a wealth of information, uh, not just to plan your future, but also information about Florida's top jobs and related careers. So if you know the area of interest that you might want to explore, you'll be able to learn about that particular area and then make the connection between your meta major, your career options available under that meta major, and then how that all translates into your future career and potentially your income. So again, to learn more about My Career Shines, I want to invite you to visit MyCareerShines.org. So thank you again, um, Janae. We do have some questions from our audience. Um, at this time, I know you wanted to share some takeaways and highlights that you wanted to share with our audience. So I'll let you share those, and we will be collecting questions for the Q&A part. Okay, awesome. Yes, I see the questions. Um, so I just want to wrap up with key highlights, and then I'll go into answering your questions. So just four things to remember, identify a career path, a major or meta major that aligns with attended career plans, meet with an academic advisor to discuss career plans and to de determine program avail availability and options, um, select courses that satisfy general education core requirements, um, align with the appropriate gateway courses, and meet common prerequisites for intended transfer major in order to accelerate time to degree completion and redu reduce the cost of attendance. And so I know one of the questions I saw earlier talked about asked, um, can you change your major? Um, you certainly can change your major. In Florida, there's a um, excess credit hour um, law where there is penalty if you go, financial penalty if you go over a certain number of credits. So it is important to try to avoid excess credit hours as much as possible. Um, excess credits are applied um, at the state university. So if you attend um, one of the universities here in Florida, um, is where you can see those surcharges. So if you explore heavy in the beginning um, with changing majors and then you don't have the appropriate courses, when you get to the university, you run the risk of um, paying almost the equivalent of out-of-state tuition. And so that's why we, we stress the importance of identifying a, um, a, a career that way, if you're undecided on a particular major, you can find a meta major that aligns with your career goal. And this should answer the other question that I saw, what's the difference between undecided and meta major? So, so when you identify a meta major, a meta major consists of multiple majors that align with a career goal. So you may, you know you want to do um, a health major, you want to be in the health field, but you really don't know if you want to do nursing or speech pathology, um, 
or radiology technology, you're not sure. But the meta major helps guide your coursework so you're not taking a variety of courses that don't count towards one field. So um, meta majors are in Florida. That is a part of Florida, but it's it's a term in a method a methodology that is used across the country as states are going towards guided pathways. So meta majors are not just here, but you'll find the terminology in um, a lot of states across the country, um, or you will see the term called career clusters. Um, they may be referred to as different things, but they all mean the same thing. We want to guide your course selection to make sure you're um, taking courses that align with your intended career goal. So that way, when you do select a major, you have courses that have purpose, that are fulfilling requirements. So I think I answered two or three questions in that one thing. You did. Yeah, we're getting lots of questions about um, those, Janae, related. So I appreciate the clarification with major and programs and undecided programs and meta majors. So then will advanced placement courses satisfy prerequisite requirements? Yes, as long as they meet the appropriate score required to count the course, the AP class as passing. So there's a list on DOE's website, and I, I want to say Florida Shines may have it as well, but the Florida Department of Education's Articulation Office, Office of Articulation, has a list that's titled um, Credit by Exam you will see which college credit you'll get for AP courses, IB courses, CLEP exams, um, any credit by exam is on that list. Whatever the state approves will be on that list. It will also tell you what score you need to have and to get credit for a particular course. So um, yes, AP courses can count towards common prerequisites. Just look at the credit by exam list, and I'll be sure to add that to future resources in presentation as well. Thank you, Janae, and we'll make sure to share that. That is available on Florida Shine, so we'll share that link um, with the audience as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw, I wanted to go back to the topic of dual enrollment, and uh, there's a question related to dual enrollment and whether or not uh, that is something that colleges look at as an achievement or an advantage when they're looking at applications? So in Florida, um, a dual enrollment credit articulates to all of the public colleges and universities. So, you know, it's a, a good, it's a good um, acceleration me method. Florida leads the country with dual enrollment. Our students um, are entering colleges and universities with dual enrollment credit, and they're graduating faster. Um, the students who are graduating faster, they have courses that are intentional, that are purposeful, um, that are meeting requirements. Um, that's what colleges and universities would like to see, is that you have courses that are satisfying requirements. So um, if you're just taking dual enrollment courses and they don't satisfy any requirements, you're technically not accelerating your time to degree. So if you're going to do dual enrollment, again, just make sure you're satisfying requirements, um, your gen ed core, your common prerequisites. Um, if not, you'll have to still satisfy those requirements, and then you didn't accelerate any time to degree completion. Thank you, Janae. I think we had a question related to um, the 2 plus 2 in articulation for students who are looking at completing their first two years here in Florida and then transferring out of state. Are there particular resources or a specific place where they should go to get the best information to make sure all their credits are transferring? Yes, so I recommend doing the same thing that I recommend if you're going to a Florida university. Find out the requirements for your degree program for the out-of-state co state college or university. So if you're going to NYU, I recommend you identify the program requirements um, for that university and then make your course selection as it aligns um, with their requirements. 
um, a lot of what we talked about today um, is in Florida, and our numbers, numbering system uh, is common across the state and across the institution. So ENC 1101, English 1 at T Tallahassee Community College is ENC 1101 at Florida State University. So, but out of state, you'll have to take an extra step to make sure you have open communication and dialogue with those universities and colleges um, to ensure that you're taking the correct courses that they need. Absolutely. Um, Janae and I just want to add, I would say that makes such a difference. Sometimes if you're not a current student at that university, there may even be someone in the admissions office or in the prospective student office that um, can work with you to make sure you're taking those courses, I would imagine. So great information. Um, I wanted to just remind our audience that we are going to share those links. Uh, so we'll include that as part of the follow-up along with the recording from today's session and any materials or additional information that Janae sent. So you will get that as a follow-up um, from this session. So I um, don't believe the audience has any additional questions, Janae, but I wanted to thank you one more time for sharing such a wealth of resources. And I would want to invite our audience to join us next week once you've found the meta major and the program of study that's relevant to you, we want to help you choose the college and university that's right for you. And that's next week with our College Success Series, next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for the next series. Again, finding the right college, the right college for you. And you can sign up at floridashines.org. So thank you again, Janae, for being with us today, and we look forward to having you with us next time. No problem. It was my pleasure. Thank you.